Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Conscious Living Show. Here we are live online with our um, Vajrayana Buddhist family. Um, we're doing an interview this, this afternoon with Kandro Trinley Chodon. Kandro is a, a beautiful feminine Buddhist lay teacher, and she brings to the Western world the the insights and principles of, of Vajrayana Buddhism in a way that really enables people to practice these principles in daily life in a very loving and compassionate way. And Kandro is going to be a keynote speaker at the Conscious Living Festival in November. And I wanted to have a chat with her today because it's a very auspicious day on the Buddhist calendar. And I wanted to talk with, with you, Kandra, about the, um, the Divine Mother and why this day is so special. And perhaps you can pronounce the name of it because I find it difficult to pronounce some of these names. Uh, but I'd love you to share what it means to you this special day and that is celebrating the principle of the Divine Mother. muted camera machine okay it was these technical things so anyway so nice to see you patricia we are so close but at the same time looks uh, we are far so uh going into the um, you know the powerful places in australia with you and 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 then now connecting to you uh, for conscious living on this uh, forum and uh, especially on this special day, it is called Habab Duchen. It's such an auspicious of, of uh, descending of uh, Buddha from the heavenly realms. And, um, and it is like so beautiful for me because personally, the mother energy and the mother, wow. divine mother and the divine wisdom of Buddhism is uh, the essence of my practice, is the essence of my life. And it is the... Uh, heart of uh, all my work. So today is a celebration of that divine wisdom mother because the Buddha Shakyamuni uh, was in um, uh, re going to uh, his rainy retreat and then at the age of 41 after enlightenment, then after giving the, uh, you know, connecting to all the divine feminine essence of wisdom, then he realized that, oh, you know, my physical mother uh, died at the age of uh, uh, when he was just uh, in one week of his birth, the mother died. So even though he's, uh, excuse me, okay, because there's a lot of uh, the, the dogs start to bark. <laughs> Is that okay? It's okay. I think, I'll, can I, can we just delete and do it again? Because um. I, huh yeah okay well, that's okay i think it's fine um dogs are barking it's part of the um present moment isn't it <laughs> yeah it is you know in india it is like that i thought then may be difficult for you so no, i think also good. you're right it is bringing us to the present moment uh, where everything is allowed and embraced you know mm -hmm. that is the mother principle mm -hmm. so i feel that uh you know it is very special because the mother is the uh like heart purity of uh, nurturing holding loving caring so it, uh, of course uh, buddha shakyamuni's mother when she died he, her sister prasnapati gotami she overtook uh, and uh, married uh, you know his father and then she became the the aunt became the mother whole life she was amazing and she in the end of his uh, you know uh, he she became the first woman uh, ordained you know, so it was the she he he was embraced by mother energy anyway, but the physical mother is very important. So then what what he did, it was the rainy season retreat. At that time, he ascended to the thirty uh, third uh, heavenly realms, and uh, where his uh, mother was, uh, they say Tushita, but many texts doesn't say Tushita. So uh, so then he, there um, he taught. Uh, the Abhidharma teachings and then connected his physical mother to the most divine 
essence of the universal truth of love and compassion uh, because still even though he was she was in the very heavenly realm but uh, still she was karmically bounded which means she will circle you know in the karmic uh, trappings so he didn't want that for her this was the first gratitude and therefore she went up and connected and then uh, eventually uh, you know after three months then all the uh, you know, or, or worldly, you know, his students, they're all waiting for him in, in Shravasta. And then, uh, you know, Mongol, who is his uh, student, who has the most miraculous, uh, you know, powers, and no one could go up to heavenly realm because we don't have the merit to do it. But he had the power in, the, they say, in the stretch of his hand, he went up. And in that moment, and then he, everyone requested, and then he bowed to Buddha and please, come down to earth we need you because uh, so many teachings so many blessings need to still process among us and so then then they say that the indra and the vishnu and all the god gods they and especially uh, now that such a ma machine world and they say um, uh, the what is called wish uh, wish. Uh, wish karma and then he was part of uh, that uh, main, making those ladders you know there was a lepus lucy a, a gold and a silver and then for, uh, buddha didn't have to come come on the ladder but uh, but everyone offered so he accepted so he descended on the ladder it's just i just find that image so beautiful you know all the gold and silver on the all the godly beautiful godly retinue all, all, uh, all the powerful gods they all are coming uh, for Buddha to come descend and all the worldly human, the earthly beings, you know, we all and we are all embracing and so happy to have him. So this is a very, very special moment to this day from the time of Buddha to this day, we celebrate that moment uh, as a very uh, uh, powerful day for gratitude, for celebration, for, you know, today I was with the Bhutanese uh, community, every with talk, puja, food, abundance, and then all everybody is reading this text and and uh, you know music and it was just very beautiful so in our culture so it's a day of very special feminine mother energy celebration yeah so i mean as you've explained it i guess the principle means it means about celebrating birth and life and the mother that gives birth to us and the mother that is our earth that sustains us with food with um, the environment and all the creatures and beings that are part of the ecosystem that is our earth and that sustains our life. So uh, I'd love you to talk a little bit more about how we can actually, uh, you know, bring that awareness more into our daily lives, you know, because we are all uh, we're all connected, we all cannot survive unless we have oxygen, water, sunshine, good food, love and caring. So it seems to me that this is a really important principle to, that we should be bringing into every day of our life, not just on this particular day. Yeah, absolutely, you know, but this day is a day of abundance. So everything that merit good things we do for ourselves, for our family, for our world, for 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 our, uh, it is like a, it's a special day. There's a super infusion of compassion and love. You know, extra dose, mm -hmm. like a hundred hundred million times. So just sometimes the energetic fields are, you know, from the time of the vibrations are there in the atmosphere. You see, so we have this earthly blend, and then when Buddha goes to the world, and how the people treasure the Buddha and the mother energy and like everybody wants him here so he can infuse like inject us with uh, love and compassion of course we have the all the five elements here but unknowingly due to our ignorance we are polluting and uh, you know misusing uh, and abusing our uh, home you know our our planet so what a beautiful day that we can super infuse ourselves with our own mind because you are buddha yourself so so it's not like hey guys you are terrible people and buddha is saying no you know you all are the buddha nature within yourself so even though we make mistakes on our planet we can always replenish ourselves with love and compassion so this is the day when you extra replenish you know all the elemental satellites all the energetic fields 
fields are even more vibrations are there. So therefore we have to take that and bring that to ourselves and rejoice in ourselves, you know, take a break, love yourself and feel, oh my goodness, this is not the red, red race. Every day is, is the thing. I am so special. I am precious. I am a piece of magic on this planet. You know, and then feeling that oh, earth element, you know, it's also my mother, the sky, and and all the warmth of the fire, the sun, and uh, all the wind and the breathing in, breathing out. Oh, wow, torrent tornadoes. You know, recently we had all this crazy part of the wind, but also the breathing in and breathing out. So completely present and infusing so many Buddha's teachings are there available. Those are we reading today, infusing ourselves and infusing the world. So it's a very, very powerful, special day. But of course, we have to take it into every day. Of course, every day if we do is very good. But if you have a super special day where you're 100 million times you are able to infuse, why not, you know? And this is written in the scriptures. It's not like you and me made it up, you know, this day we celebrate for 2,500 years. And Buddha is one person who will not lie, you know. Nowadays, we have so many advertisements trying to oh, put this cream, put the, no, you don't have to put the cream. You can just, uh, you know, load yourself with uh, compassion and love and each of cell of your body can be activated and your outer beauty, inner beauty, secret beauty will come out. Why not? So that's beautiful the way you describe it. It's like a really regenerating and rejuvenating process and right. taking the energy that's here and really utilising it for your own inner nurturing and well-being. Um, and I imagine that there are people all around the world celebrating at the same time on this day. So there must be a, a collective field of yeah, uh, yeah. shared energy as well that would come yeah, yeah. That, that. That, yeah, yeah, you got it, you know. So imagine His Holiness Dalai Lama, he's like the Buddha on this planet now, you know, and then all the great masters in Buddhist teach teachers and masters still alive, and all the old texts, you know, they are being read from hundreds and thousands of years texts are taken out. Normally you don't remember, you're busy. And this day, oh yes, we have to, and then they are they are all being activated. So it's a collective energy is being, you know, like a, um, activated. So that is the power that we are seeking today. And for you to interview me for your beautiful work of conscious living, is we have to be conscious. We cannot be dead. We cannot become stupid, you know? So this is a perfect day. Yeah, it's beautiful. I mean, that that power and that energy that you exemplify comes through your words and your presence. It's um, it's that Dakini energy, isn't it? That that feminine uh, activating principle that you are so uh, such a great example of, um, and it's infectious actually because <laughs> it feels like you know it's waking us up because we can yeah. get so kind of dull and. You know, we're working hard, we're doing our things to stay alive and meet challenges. And But actually, this is kind of sparkly, beautiful, light celebration energy. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, since early morning, I have been, you know, going to the Bhutanese community. You could see, I mean, it was so beautiful. That everyone is dressed in their traditional dress and you know, normally they will work in, in, in the western world material world you know so you know being served and then you see that they are all elevated and you can feel the collective energy and then mm -hmm. we have all these uh, the monks and that they are live streaming from our own home and and it's like a you know like a it's just amazing to sit here in australia and feel this you know vibration and the monks are like beating the drums back home and and then we are all practicing i did a huge mahakala a protector puja today along with my community i never get time to do such a long prayers you know so it was just so beautiful to have the monks you know drumming and you know music from back home and then we can hear and this this a beautiful technical world is also you know if you use this well it is just amazing what uh, magic it can create that what well, I was feeling today. What what is a mahakala? Mahakala is a is a protector, you know, uh, is a masculine protector, and uh, and uh, for this time, it's like a wrathful protector to 
cut through all this bullshit mm -hmm. and uh, you know like a like this like a you know knife you know we sometimes we feel so cut and betrayed and betrayal and uh, so much uh, painful things you know uh, in this world right now collectively you know yeah, you know uh, yeah, in, in our in our world right now with sicknesses and you know people just lady just came she, her husband just i was visited in the hospital and he died and she just came to get that blessings to elevate his his uh in the west you say soul or or we say our consciousness and yeah. so so this kind of uh, painful things are there all around the world children are being abused you know look everywhere just no need much look at the tv and open up you see so much so in that time we need these wrathful great protectors to cut through everything and and then bring the elevation you know in a compassionate way but sometimes we need to cut through you know just cannot collect any more garbage mm, mm. that really makes sense doesn't it because you know the, the news of the last week and all the events that have been happening and particularly in wa a lot of people are feeling very stressed and anxious about um the way things are being handled and managed with the with the pandemic restrictions on people mandates for people to have vaccines etc and there's a lot of i think um worry and fear mm. that's permeating and that's one of the reasons why we've invited you to be our keynote speaker and master of, mistress of ceremony at the festival because it feels like it's really important to uh, inspire people, to empower people, to uplift people with a higher um, place of beauty and love and compassion, which will give us power and strength to go through these difficult times. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I totally understand what you mean. You know, we need a lot of inspiration. We need a lot of empowerment. We need a lot of holding, nurturing. Mm -hmm. You know, this is so necessary because people are feeling so attacked now. And then, you know, it's such a, a kind of silly. I got the COVID, but it was not so scary as it is projected. And that fear has blocked and people are going nuts, you know. Mm -hmm. So 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 how do we help them to calm down mm -hmm. you know that, that for that we need that divine mother energy mother has the energy to hold to nurture mm -hmm. and and have the restful mind and support that rather than you know activate uh, fear so mm -hmm. so therefore you know i think it is important and i really thank you for trusting me and inviting me in this platform uh, and uh, and I think uh, I'm very fortunate because I had the great masters of our era to hold me and being born uh, in their lab uh, has been the greatest, uh, what do you call, stability, you know, in my life. And that stability, I feel I seem to provide to people uh, because I just got it as a gift, you know, mm. in the midst of chaos if you are able to bring that stability so this today's day is about to claim that stability you know, mm. today's day stability is very connected to mother you know divine mother even our physical mother is chaotic but you have to remember that is just 10 percent there is bigger mm. mother bigger picture of your mother always there and that we have to connect the people to that wisdom mm. And you're going to be speaking about the divine feminine path of compassion and wisdom uh, in particular, aren't you, at the festival? And uh, I understand that in Buddhism, the, the foundation of awakening is very much compassion and wisdom, isn't it? It's, uh, yes. it's not just about individual enlightenment and awakening, but it's about being connected to all beings and to emanating that vibration uh, throughout. So would you could you just talk a little bit about that? Because I think that a lot of us have been brought up with the idea of individual enlightenment. It's not necessarily about a compassionate path and sharing with others. Yes, yes. So, you know, like when we are talking about individual 
uh, individualism, you know, which is mm. very much part of our materialistic world, you know. So therefore, you know, like families are becoming very segregated because, you know, you know, everyone needs a car you know oh yeah so so in in my culture you know we try to uh, look at things in a collective way you know like it's very ecological way of thinking it's just implanted in our brain you know as a child you know like for example my mother even you you know that in in tibet there's so much atrocities happen and and my my family was completely you know uh, completely physically you know like you know um, smashed and and she being alive and you know she she would like would not allow us to be angry to the chinese you're not allowed you cannot project that or you project compassion because you know they don't know they're ignorant and even though things happen to our family but our families will transcend in the more eternal way you know very properly but there will be more very difficulties for them so we need to pray that we, we we if we didn't have the power to deal with this we won't get it collectively in tibet so so now we we are moving to another country we have to bring this compassion this is our gift to the world and you are not allowed even as a child not allowed to project anger you know and that was very hard for me but when i read now as i grow up yes that's the only way you know we 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 can we have to be in this time and age age but the selfish sense self-centered thinking is not going to bring any benefit to yourself and the other so we are uh, we have to try our best to emulate the buddha you know buddha's way because you know, he had all the materialistic thing. He didn't bring, a, he didn't feel anything great in the end of the day because he feel trapped. Then once he extended his compassion and love out to others and felt the feeling of others suffering, you know, like he didn't have, in, he was born a prince, so he didn't have to go through, but he found, connected to all the death and the people's sickness and all of that. And that is the way, that is the place where his compassion start to ooze out, you know? And when his compassion become bigger and bigger, there was there was nothing of that, you know, heavy things left. And if he feel lighter and lighter, open and over, and the whole world he shifted, not only himself. You know, when we are angry, we alone are cocooned. Yes. You know? So when our compassion and love, we can live, you know, but this is not easy job, but, uh, you know, we have the potential. And in a small way, we can always, you know, feel it. You know, this this is the right. But mm-hmm. when we think our head, you feel no, this is wrong. They are going to get benefit. You know, uh, the other and the other becomes really strong and heavy. But that that only brings bang come back to you abundance that fear. Mm-hmm. So so when you really think it's a counter counterproductive, intuitive kind of paradoxical kind of uh, thinking, but in the end it works. You know. Mm-hmm. That's so beautiful. And it's like uh, just recalling and remembering and connecting to that essence of the divine mother mm-hmm. in and that compassionate nature it, that we have in ourselves and expanding that. That's a that's a beautiful way, isn't it, to to meet challenges and to help others, you know, through that awareness and that presence. Absolutely. There's no other way when you really think, you know, mm. there's no other way. That's the only way, but it is fearful because somewhere underneath all of that, we are holding to something, you know, out of fear. And to, to let go of that fear uh, of holding is, is the place where, where we have to uh, kind of loosen up. Mm. That loosening up is, is all the practice is all about, you know, loosening up. The more you loosen up, more compassion come naturally. More you uptie, more you are getting, you know, uh, you know, blocked unknowingly or knowingly, you know. Therefore, the great master Shanti Deva said, all the joy this world contains come from wishing is like opening happiness for others. All the suffering that this world contains come from wanting. Wanting is like holding, you know, wanting happiness for oneself. So you you know we don't you you we can see here in this materialistic world the the families you know when when they become very selfish and you know they don't care about their own children in the end of the day you know the parents are all alone mm. and that's not a pleasant 
because they are so attached to that materialistic things and they didn't share. And then in the end, children don't want to go there. And that's very painful if your own children don't want to come there, I feel, you know. Mm. So, so that uh, when we are talking about the Divine Mother, it's all uh, is the path of opening and shifting and clearing and connecting to the open mother, not the claustrophobic kind of mother, you know, physical mother. That's why you know, Buddha, when he understood the mother energy of all sentient beings in the wisdom path, then he remembered the physical mother. Oh, where's she? And then he realized, oh, she is still trapped in the heavenly realms. You know, she gave birth to me, but I don't want him, her to circulate in these uh, trappings. I want to, to her to be completely liberated in love and compassion. And then from that compassion come again in the world, not through fear. And, uh, you know, uh, so, so that uh, he wanted to break that chain for her. her. That's so beautiful. Thank you so much, Kandro, for sharing those insights with us. I can't wait to have more conversations with you because you just have such an amazing way of transmitting that experience, you know, through your words and through your compassionate heart. So uh, I'm looking forward to, to seeing you again and uh, inviting everyone to come and see you. Um, you'll be having a booth as well where sacred treasures will be um, offering all their beautiful handcrafted products from India and from the Himalayas, as well as food. And you'll be there as well to meet with visitors and to do some blessings. Um, and so we'll put up a link to everything that you have available and uh, we will um, for sure have another, have another conversation with you before the 20th and 21st of November. Wonderful. So, so thanks everyone for tuning in to the Conscious Living Show. I'm going to hand over now to uh, the team who are going to take us to the next part of the program. Thank you so much. <laughs>